institution. My name is Brett Morris and I'm a third year graduate student at the University of Washington. Nice. And so I'm a, I'm a local. If you want to ask me where to get drinks later tonight, come, come visit me in a moment. Um, now, I'm going to be talking to the observers in the room for the next few minutes, so the few people who do simulations and play with YT a lot. I'm sorry if you get bored. Uh, but something that the rest of us will have in common is that at some point in your inbox has popped an email like this that has sent you into a panic. Usually, because you realize you need to put together a proposal for something and then you forget it for a few months and then the deadline's coming up and now you have three days to plan your entire science proposal and you're a little well, panicked. Okay, right, so you have to use the other AstroPy affiliated packages like CCD proc to finish your data from before and then you can finally make your science proposal. And before you can arrive at the mountaintop and do the <laughs> science that you want to do, Usually, I would venture to guess that most of you take the science targets that you might propose to observe and stick them through some kind of black box to figure out what's observable, what are the best targets for you to actually look at. And in the next 12-ish minutes, I'm going to try to convince you to stick some AstroPy in that black box and stop using JavaScript calculators on the internet to calculate when your targets are observable. Very I'm going functional. to <laughs> propose that you use AstroPlan which is a package for observation planning for astronomers. Uh, it's AstroPy affiliated. It was built, uh, half of the mentors are AstroPy uh, aficionados, and they enforced all of the AstroPy development rules within AstroPlan, so if you open up the code, it should look familiar. Uh, and we follow the open development model of AstroPy, so if you check out our past closed pull requests, you will find tens or sometimes hundreds of comments about what's the right way to design our API, which thank you mentors for being so diligent. Uh, AstroPlan was developed as a Google Summer of Code project last summer with my partner Jasmine Berlanga Medina, who uh, with me developed all of the stuff that you're about to see. And it's currently only in version 0.1, so we are really looking for your contributions to make it work well and work for all the kinds of astronomers that are in this room because we tried to represent a wide variety of wavelengths on our team that built AstroPlan, but from radio to gamma ray might not actually be enough. We might need everyone at every stage in between. Planning observations at first might seem like a really well-defined problem, because all you need to do is know what observatory you're observing from, figure out when targets rise and set from that observatory, and then maybe you have some extra filters you need to put on those targets that define whether or not a target is observable. But of course, astronomers will find infinite ways to use a telescope. And so trying to design an observation planning package that can work for individual astronomers planning one night of observations or work for an observatory planning a semester of observations uh, can get arbitrarily complicated pretty quickly. And so the goal of AstroPlan is to support both of those use cases and the things in between. And to do that, we're using AstroPy's uh, functionality for defining a location on the surface of the Earth, for defining a location in the sky, joining the two with an altitude azimuth reference frame, and then figuring out what's observable. And so AstroPlan just tries to provide a more direct way to do those kinds of calculations using a fixed target object, which defines your objects in the sky with some metadata, and an observer class, which defines an Earth location with some metadata. And so you can put those things together to get uh, really convenient functions. So let's, let's ask a really simple question. Where is Vega from Apache Point Observatory, where I do most of my work? Uh, there's an observer class which knows about a bunch of observatories, and we'd love for you to contribute the observatory that you use most often to AstroPy so that you can pull that in. And then you can define a target to observe and find out its altitude and azimuth using AstroPlan pretty quickly. And I'm showing you just one of many convenience methods that are available on the observer class that can get the information that you would need either when planning observations or when you're sitting at the telescope and running an IPython terminal and trying to figure out when does my target finally rise above my lower pointing limit. Uh, you can do those things from the command line pretty easily. The place where AstroPlan became really useful for me in my work is the way that we are allowing an easy way to compute constraints on targets. And what I'm calling constraints are the things other than is it just up in the sky. Uh, so for example, when you have a target list, you know what observatory you're observing from, and you know on what time range, you still need to define pointing limits for your telescope or a separation from the moon that's allowable for your science. Or you know how dark the sky needs to be in order to do your observations. 
And so defining those things with Astro Plan has been made as easy as possible. There's a class for each of those types of constraints that you can use to compute when targets are observable given whatever constraints you find in your daily life. Uh, so here is that example demonstrated in just a few lines of code. And um, this observability table class uh, method gives you out an AstroPy table that tells you whether your targets can be observable in the time range at all, if they're always observable in the time range that you put in, and what fraction of that time they're observable. And it's not too hard to use. And as a result of being not too hard to use, it's already getting used. Uh, at the University of Washington, Dr. Toby Smith runs an introduction to programming for astronomers class to undergraduates in the Astro 300 series. And there is a whole day devoted to observing with Python in that class. <coughs> and uh, he's developed a really nice example that he works through using the Manistash Ridge Observatory, which is out in eastern Washington, that our undergraduates take an observing class to learn how to use. And they go out there over the summer by themselves and try not to die on the dirt roads. And so Toby here works through an example for planning observations at MRO, which I think is really fun because this ensures that next year I will have a bunch of undergraduates who are using my code to plan their observations and hopefully will give us more issues on GitHub. Uh, so go take a look at that lesson if you need to teach someone how to observe. It's actually pretty good. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun using AstroPlan with some of my students. I'm an academic mentor and a research mentor in pre-map at the University of Washington, which approaches the insane task of taking a freshman undergraduate who intends to major in astronomy, and in their first 10 weeks at the university, we try to teach them to program in Python, to read research literature, to become comfortable talking to graduate students or professors about the research that they do, start doing that research with them, and then present to the department on the 10th week. And it's uh, fantastically successful. We have a really great time with those students. And the project that I work on with my students is called SPAMS. I'm thinking about how to work in a follow-on project called EGGS. And SPAMS is searching for planets around white dwarfs uh, just by picking metal polluted white dwarfs out of a catalog and looking to see if they have any transiting objects. Uh, it's thought that the metal pollution in the atmospheres of these white dwarfs are uh, coming from planetary debris left over in these systems after the, the death of the star. And last year, unfortunately, the first such transiting object was discovered around a white dwarf. So we didn't get the first one, but we're still watching. So far, we've observed for more than 70 nights at uh, APO on the 0.5 meter telescope. And we plan those observations using AstroPlan because we have a really long list of white dwarfs that have been put out by the SDSS team. And some of them are metal polluted, some of them aren't. And we have some observing constraints. We want to look at the ones that are up for the majority of the night because we're looking for objects orbiting these white dwarfs on like six hour periods. So if we could observe for eight hours in one night, you might be able to see two transits of an object and nail down a period also, which would be really fun. Hasn't happened yet, it might happen. So we want to observe targets that are up for a long fraction of the night. And since we are graduate students and undergrads, uh, we have classes and meetings in the morning. So we only want the things that are really up during the first half of the night. And with the help of AstroQuery, it's really easy to do all of these things. You can use AstroQuery to pull down the list of white dwarfs from Vizier and then stick all of those targets into AstroPlan and compute uh, which white dwarfs are observable given all of those constraints. And they start popping out. And so we run this every now and then with tweaked uh, tolerances on what magnitude we want to observe and how close to the moon we're willing to get if we're feeling risky uh, in order to pick which targets to observe each night. Tonight, we start observing again. It's going to be fun. Uh, the future work, which is important and will really make this more useful to all of you, is to schedule observations. Once you know which targets are observable in a given time range, figuring out the optimal time to observe each of these things is the thing that Stephanie was recently trying to work on, which Eric Tarot has put together a pull request for. And once we do that, we still want to be able to provide scheduling tools that are useful to individual observers for their own night's worth of observations, and also a generic enough API that observatories can fork AstroPlan and then develop their own tools on top of what already exists for their specific instruments and telescopes and limitations. And this summer, we should have a Google Summer of Code student who will be working on that task. And I'm not going to go on about the sprints because they just spoke, 
but uh, we had two awesome sprints from Stephanie and Gert who put together some tools that you can play with uh, within AstroPlan. And I encourage you to go make your own air mass plots. I just had fun doing that. And I look forward to all of the pull requests that people in this room will one day give to AstroPlan. Uh, check out the docs. And I got to thank Jasmine again in particular, who did a lot of the development, who's not here today, and the Summer of Code for paying me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>and
for a proposal in your voice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> With your GitHub voice, yes. Unfortunately, you'd have to write thousands of proposals to train on. <laughs> but, but no, that's, but if you want to be his voice, <laughs> so he would have to have thousands of I have written thousands of CAC proposals, yeah, so I can no, do it now. <laughs> no. All right. Let's thank Brett again. Thanks.